What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mind Something. If you're new here, my name is Jake, and in today's video, it's been a very long time since I covered mining Radiant, and considering it's remained at the top of the profitability charts for a considerable amount of time, I think it's about time that we do it again. You'd have to go back like five or six months to find a video on the channel the last time I talked about Radiant Overclocks. This one's six months old. This was dual mining Radiant and Ergo. This one was dual mining ETH, W, and Radiant. That was five months ago. And we talked about Overclocks about six months ago and how to mine it about six months ago. But, you know, I've discovered a lot of things, a lot of better Overclocks since we posted that video a long time ago. And, yeah, I think it deserves a little bit of my attention. So, Let's take a look at hashrate.no real quick. Um, I want to set this to 13 cents per kilowatt hour. We're going to find a single 3070. Let's change that to 13 cents. So we've got a couple of different overclock recommendations from hashrate.no. We got core offset of 255 with the locked core of 1455. This would net us 689 mega hash at 81 watts. Or, if you wanted a little bit more hash rate and a little bit lower efficiency, 210 on the core offset, 1740 on the locked core clock, and that gets us 815 mega hash at 114 watts. Well, how does that compare to what I'm running right now? Let's take a look. So, a single 3070. We're getting 744 mega hash at 70 watts, which is considerably better than what hashrate.no is rocking at the moment. And you may be asking yourself, well, what are your overclocks? Let me show you. So currently I'm running a core offset of 400 with a locked core clock of 1550, memory locked at 810. And I've been just tinkering around with the overclock settings. In my flight sheet, I have it set a little bit differently. So, in the flight sheet, I have the core offset at 300, locked core clock at 1500, and locked memory at 810. By the way, we are setting the power limits within the extra config arguments, and I cannot stress to you enough how important it is that you set your power limits in the extra config arguments when using BZ Miner. There is a bug, and he is aware of it. We're not exactly sure what causes it, but what happened not too long ago was uh, I changed everything over to RxD and went to bed that night, woke up the next morning, went out of town, and didn't check on the rigs until about 5 o'clock that evening. And it was actually this particular rig, Naboo. And my 3080s were using almost 300 watts. The 3070s were using like 200 and something watts. My core temps were skyrocketing. I think they were well over 70. I might have seen some 80s in there. And I cannot believe that I did not lose a power supply or a GPU. I don't know how long it had been that way. But I'm just warning you guys right now, you do not want to be in this situation. And it is imperative that you set the power limits in the extra arguments. For whatever reason, the little bug that's going on, it does not respect the power limits that you set in HiveOS. So, something to be aware of. Anyway, let's get back to overclock, shall we? Let's take a look at some other GPUs. So... Tatooine has a variety of 30 series GPUs in it. We've got a 3060 Ti sitting at 614.8 mega hash at 56 watts. Another 3070 at about 744 at 61 watts. Wow, that one's doing incredibly well. Uh, another 3070 at 744 at 75 watts. Then we've got a 3080 at 1.1 giga hash at 108 watts versus another 3070 Ti at 776 mega hash at 73 watts doing quite a bit better than this 3070 actually so every single GPU is rocking the exact same overclocks they're all at 400 on the core offset 1550 on the locked core 
and 810 on the memory. Now, there are other overclocks out there. Um, Red Fox put out a video about three months ago with his overclock settings for Radiant. He's also using BZ Miner, and you can see he's got a variety of different locked core clocks, but he is still using the core offset of 400. Now, I've heard from some people that 400 is not stable, but right now I'm sitting at about an hour on every single rig with no rejected shares and no instability issues. So I personally think that those are safe to run. Um, you could potentially refer back to uh, some of these locked core settings if you want to try and dial in the efficiency. But from what I'm seeing on my rigs, I, I think I am a little bit more efficient than most of the settings that he's got in here. So I'm not real sure if 1470 would be better on an A4000 as opposed to 1550. I would imagine it is. And for you guys out there that aren't aware of this, this is why we're covering this. But this is what happens when you run a locked core clock with a core offset. If you just have a core offset, the higher the number you go, the more power you're going to use, and potentially the more hash rate you're going to get. Now, if you had no locked core clock, excuse me, no core offset, and run a locked core clock, the higher the number, the more power you're going to use, and the higher the hash rate. But when you combine both of these together, we get a little bit of magic. So the higher the core with a locked core, let's say the locked core stays stagnant at 1500. If I were to lower the core offset down to 300, I would increase in power usage, but not necessarily in efficiency. Efficiency would go down drastically and I really wouldn't gain anything in hash rate. So when you combine these two together, the higher the core, the less wattage, and the higher the locked core, the higher the wattage. So if you want to get extremely efficient, you would probably stick with the core at 400 with a locked core somewhere around 1300. I think 1305 to 1315 is probably going to be the most efficient on the lower end, so a 3060, 3060 Ti. Uh, but when you get to a 3080 and a 3080 Ti, uh, it does seem like you need to push that locked core a little bit more to around 1500 to get the most efficient settings out of it. So, yeah, as far as Radiant is concerned, um, right now, the network hash rate is up considerably. You can see by looking at the difficulty chart here, we've just skyrocketed. And I don't know if price is going to keep up with the difficulty, um, but I do expect some good things to come out of Radiant's future. And hopefully this video ages well and helps you guys get locked in with the best settings that you can find. Anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed the content. Do me a favor before you go, hit that like and hit the subscribe. And if you're looking for AMD overclocks for Radiant, uh, check out Kiwi Crypto Miner. He has a variety of AMD GPUs and could probably get you the most efficient settings for Radiant there. All right, that's it. I'm out. Have a good one.